Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, South Africa's state-owned entities are currently failing to perform their most basic mandate, providing services and opportunities to the citizens of our country. Instead, SOEs stumble from one crisis to another, and average South Africans, especially the poor, are left to bear the brunt of the ANC's continued broken promises. The reality is that if we don't turn around this current status quo at the state-owned entities, our economy could face possible collapse. Urgent reform of our state-owned entities is desperately needed. It is evident that South Africa's SOEs are in financial distress. This is largely due to state capture, corruption, financial mismanagement, poor governance and a general lack of oversight. Just because state capture has been exposed does not mean state-owned entities are in the clear. In fact, the hard work only starts now. An effective turnaround strategy is needed to ensure that SOEs get back to work service delivery after years of parastatals being abused by Gupta Link companies receiving dodgy tenders, children of top managers awarded multi-million rand contracts, and certain ANC politicians and private companies colluding to defraud the state of billions of rand. The level of corruption and mismanagement was able to manifest itself because the operations of the SOEs often go unchecked and their dominance is highly uncontested. The current state of SOEs is also a damning indictment on the lack of a clear vision and political will from the governing party. The ANC does not have the appetite to unlock the true potential of state-owned entities and drive job growth and creation. Our SOEs need to become depoliticized. Political appointments to the boards of SOEs through the ANC's cadre deployment policy have come at the expense of exceptionally skilled and knowledgeable candidates. Often, SOE boards and top management lack commercial expertise and requisite skills to create an environment in which decisions are made with profitability or sustainability in mind. This can be attributed only to the ANC's policy of cadre deployment and the absence of young graduates at SOEs. It is urgent that we dissolve the ineffective and frankly pointless Department of Public Enterprise and manage SOEs under its rightful departments. For example, Transnet, the government should return it entirely to the Department of Transport. ESCOM should move to the Department of Energy and Denel most certainly should move back to the Department of Defence. This would improve the lines of accountability and communication and also align SOEs with the efforts of their rightful portfolio. Another option would be to move and consolidate SOEs to different departments, clustering and centralising them in groupings, commercial, development, financial institutions, statutory corporations and non-commercial SOEs. Reducing the number of SOEs and streamlining them where appropriate would be a necessity. This would mean better synergy and efficiency and will reduce the demand for monitoring resources. It is unsustainable for a government to continue to financially support unviable state-owned entities. The sale of our SOEs would be managed by an independent board to prevent oligarchs from forming. Share options for employees can be offered to get a buy-in for privatisation from workers. The Competition Commission would need to be strengthened to regulate the sale of SOEs as they are currently undercapitalised to deal with this mammoth task themselves. The reality is this. While our SOEs are failing, the biggest losers are the average citizens on the ground, and service delivery is certainly not a priority for parastatals. South Africans deserve state-owned entities to be proud of. We need reliable public transport services and an efficient power utility, amongst other crucial services. The DA has a rescue plan, and this will be the first step in improving services to citizens, especially that of the poor. I thank you. House Chairperson, the untold story of the state of our nation is the one of the legacy of the ANC's broken promises. Wutibi Maswangani from Masodi village in Mukopani is one of many learners who still have to walk long distances to school because the scholar transport system in Limpopo is dysfunctional. Noamam Kwila from Upper Kwili village, 40 kilometers outside of Umtata, is still one of many South Africans in rural areas without electricity to this day. Spusisom Tembu from Clip Town is one of 3.1 million young people who are not in employment, in training, or in education. Each of these testimonies represent a broken promise by the ANC. Their aspirations for dignity have been crushed by the ANC's failure to fulfill its promises. 
In 1994, you were sent to save the people of South Africa promising a better life for all, and you broke that promise. In 2014, you were sent to save, promising that together we move South Africa forward, and you broke that promise. There is no doubt that next year you will come again promising another promise that you will break because it is in your habit to do so. And you will recycle the same old leaders from the past who will continue to fail in government. One such leader is Minister Nomvula Mukonyani, who presided over the momentous collapse and bankruptcy of the Department of Water and Sanitation. Minister Mukonyane, how do you honestly sleep at night knowing that communities in Shivulana village, in Shawela village in Guiani, have to wash their laundry at rivers fighting off animals because the Guiani water project, which was supposed to provide water in their villages, was mismanaged under your watch? How do you honestly enjoy the luxury of services in a ministerial home when mothers in Guiani go for days without taking a bath because because there is no clean water, because you failed in the Guiani Water Project. It is, it is ironic that people like you are now frontline cheerleaders chanting Tumamina, masquerading as disciples of some new dawn, when under your watch you allowed your own comrades to steal from the poor. For you and your crowd, Tumamina is nothing but an opportunistic clarion call to complete unfinished Point business of, of stealing from the poor. Point Honorable uh, Malazi, what's your order, Honorable Member? Madam Speaker, in terms of uh, Rule 85, the Honorable Member knows exactly that he's not supposed to cast aspersions on the Minister unless if he submit a substantive statement when you want to talk about ethical or unethical conduct of a minister or a deputy minister, thanks. Thank you very much. I think Chair, that uh, motion, uh, that uh, point of order is sustained. Honorable Malazi. Chairperson, may I address you? Is that a point of order? Yes. yes. A chairperson address you. I've ruled under, already on this one. Under, it's a under rule yeah. 63. Okay. The honourable member was uh, was uh, implementing, I would say, exercising freedom of speech. It is a political debate, and if you look at the auditor general's report, it clearly shows that the department was maladministered. Mal was under maladministration. Honourable member. Money went missing. Thank you. And many projects overran their budget. And this is what the honourable member is highlighting. Honourable member, you are talking about the department. He is, talk she is, he is talking directly to the former uh, minister. Uh, with due and respect, that Chair, is wrong. And I've minister, ruled on that matter. Please take your seat. The honourable minister was the minister. Please take of your Wharton seat. You cannot the attack the member. Without a substantive motion, you know that very well. Thank you. Uh, Honourable uh, Malazi, continue. Thanks, House Chairperson. Next year's election will present a choice between a failing ANC with failing leaders who still believe in failed ideas against the DA's offer of building one South Africa for all. It will be a choice between the ANC's long record of broken promises versus the DA's record of delivery in government. Because where the ANC shields comrades in government from accountability, the DA takes action regardless of their popularity or seniority. <laughs> Honorable members, our country needs change no matter how loud you shout. We need change that will make the lives of people like Budiwi, Norma and Sbusi so, so that they can realize their dreams. We need change that will make sure that our communities are safe. We need change that will protect the rights of all South Africans and foreign nationals alike. We need change that will speed the provision of basic services. And we need change that will create fair access to jobs, regardless of the parts that they belong in. No matter how much you howl, Minister, that change will also mean that you will move to that other side. And it is only the DA that can deliver that change. Nitanda Ningatandi. Thank you. After quoting Charles Dickens' opening of A Tale of Two Cities, when tabling the medium-term budget policy statement in his maiden speech to Parliament, Minister Tito Mboweni described our nation as one that can either go directly to heaven or go the other way. He argued that under President Cyril Ramaphosa, our country has chosen the difficult path of redemption. 
Oh, how desperately ye must want redemption from the sins of the ANC, the collective evil that taints them all. As the desperate pleas for redemption ring hollow six months before the elections, tragically, there is no redemption for, from the hell that your sins have subjected our people to. There can be no redemption when the same sinners still preside over looted municipalities, provinces, state entities, and government departments. Forget redemption as Satu remains untouchable through sex for job scandals, 5,000 teachers not qualified to teach, and the loss of the highest number of teaching days lost to strikes in the continent. There is no redemption while 60% of our TVET colleges remain dysfunctional and university students wait entire semesters for basic allowances, the absence of which will set them up for failure. Redemption will evade you in superficial summits that only repackage old investment pleasures through the mist of policy uncertainty, whilst 278,000 more South Africans, 117,000 of whom are youth, are added to the ranks of the unemployed since your supposed saviour, President Ramaphosa, was anointed. No, this president is as damned as the last. As a nation, we must choose not to die for your sins. After centuries of colonial and apartheid oppression, we had a dream that one day, whatever our race, background or religion, we would be able to stand together as one, living free, happy and dignified lives. The ANC abandoned that dream at the altar of self-enrichment, failing to redress the legacies of our past that keep us apart. And so we remain a deeply divided nation. There are those on the inside, people with jobs, education, opportunities. And there are those on the outside, millions of South Africans who live in poverty and who have no hope of finding employment. This must change. Under a DA government, we will bridge this divide. We will focus all our efforts on bringing the outsiders into the economy by supporting enterprise, attracting real investment and helping businesses, was large and small, to create jobs. We will Honourable unite Speaker. South Africans. Honourable Kasim, please take your seat. Yes, Honourable Deputy Minister. Can the member take a question? Are you prepared to take a question, Honourable Kasim? No, I'm not prepared to do so. Uh, Thank you. Chair take Kassim. your seat. We will unite South Africans, building one South Africa for all around this goal instead of dividing, blaming and creating enemies. One way we will do so is through, cre through creating fair access to real and long-term jobs. We have a plan, and this includes, for example, introducing a voluntary national service, one year of income and skills development for school leavers, creating job centers throughout our, our land that provide information, advice, and free internet to job seekers, growing small business opportunities through increased funding assistance and removing blockage and red tape, prosecuting and eliminating the practice of sex for jobs and carpet interviews, and pro prosecuting and eliminating the practice of cash for jobs and corruption in allocating jobs. We can choose a better path, one will, that will educate and skill our people and our youth and create fair access to, lo to real long-term jobs. If we reward ANC failure with our votes, we will all be damned. As a nation, we can find salvation, but we can only do so at the ballot box. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tony Shramajo.